Hello, welcome to Mr. Paul's Pantry. I'm Mr. Paul. And if you're new here, a very, very warm welcome. It's nice also to see my returning visitors and thank you very much for watching. Now, the recipe today is being uh, requested quite a few times, although I have made one in the past a long time ago. This particular one is aimed at a slow cooker because many of you asked about that. It's my beef stew and dumplings. Now, I don't know how you like to eat your stew and dumplings, but personally, I don't like mine like a soup. I like it thick. I like to be able to eat it with a knife and fork. And I don't like to have to add extra things on the plate with it. Uh, I don't like that. I like my food set on my plates nice. I'm a bit fussy about that. But I don't like adding extra things when it's not necessary. And if you make this beef stew correctly, like I do, I have all my vegetables and the meat, everything in the stew. The only thing I add extra on the plate afterwards is a dumpling, which I don't always have. But I don't need to add extra potatoes, mashed or boiled. I don't have to add mashed sweet or greens or anything like that, or even a crispy roll. I've seen people eat stew and stew like that a lot of different ways. I don't like that. I like a bowl of stew, which I can eat with a knife and fork, and if I fancy a dumpling, I have that as well. Now, dumplings made in the slow cooker are never, ever crispy on top. OK, if you like your dumplings crispy on top, I have done some extra ones in the oven just to show you how and what they're like. That's how I like to eat my dumplings. All right. So without further ado, let's get on with making the beef stew and dumplings in the slow cooker. So here we are with the ingredients for the beef stew uh, and we'll start off with the beef. Now make sure that's cut into reasonably sized pieces, not too small, otherwise it'll disintegrate in the slow cooker during the long cooking period. Now also, uh, the amounts that we're going to use, the recipe, don't worry about the quantities. They will be underneath the video and uh, also on screen when I'm making the video. So we've got beef. We've got some carrots, swede, you may know it as a turnip, some onion, chopped bacon, chopped tomatoes, potatoes. Now I'm using new potatoes today because of nothing else. I would normally use ordinary potatoes. Uh, red wine, beef stock, salt and pepper, and a sprig of thyme. You'll also see on their picture there uh, some mushrooms. These are quite optional. Not everybody's cup of tea. I'm using them because I like them and I need to use them up. So I'm putting them in. The vegetables you can put in anything of your choice. You can mix and match anything. Root vegetables especially. So I'll just go through them again. We've got the beef, the carrots, the swede or turnip as you may know it. Onion, bacon, chopped tomato, potatoes, red wine, beef stock, mushrooms are optional salt and pepper and a sprig of fresh thyme. Okay, let's get it putting it all together. So here we go, putting everything in the stock pot. The stock is going in first, followed by the red wine. And remember, if you don't want to use wine, you can use just stock instead. Okay. Now we've got the liquids in, we start with the carrots. Next goes in the swede, which is also known as turnip in some parts of the country, then followed by the meat. This is the onion now going in next on top of the meat. Just scrape the odd bits in, there we are. And this is the chopped tomato. I've used a tin of chopped tomatoes today, by the way, just a small tin. But you can chop fresh tomatoes if you want. I did drain a little of the liquid off the chopped tomatoes because they do tend to be a bit watery. Now in go the potatoes. Just give them a little dig. And there's the fresh thyme going in. And the lid's going on in a moment. And that will be left now for five to six hours on high. There we go. 
So now we come to the dumplings. And here we have the ingredients which are very, very few. Don't worry about the quant uh, quantities again. They're underneath the video. And also when I'm making the video, they will be on the screen. So we've got some plain flour. I've got some beef suet. Now if you want, you can use vegetarian suet. I'm using beef suet. I've got some baking powder, salt and pepper, and some cold water. Simple as that. So let's get making the dumplings. Now, when we make the dumplings, it's a very simple operation, but what you must do is follow these directions. Otherwise, you'll have a sad, unfortunate looking dumpling. Okay, so we're going to put in the flour, first of all, and the baking powder. Salt and pepper. And give that a little mix just to distribute the baking powder a little. Now we're going to add the suet. Remember, I'm using beef suet. You can use a vegetarian suet if you want. Now once that's all incorporated like this, <coughs> excuse me, we need to add some water. Now here, I've got about five tablespoons of water. I may not use it all, but it needs to be a soft dough, but not sticky. Okay, so we'll put in almost all the water and then start and incorporate that into the flour. There we go. This should take a couple of minutes, that's all. Just keep mixing gently until all the water is absorbed and there's no dry flour showing in the bowl. We're going to need a little more water than that, so I'm going to pop it all in. It all depends how dry your flour is. In hot countries like where I am in Spain, in the summer, I need to add more water to things because the flour gets very dry. But in, in, a, in a, a country where there's a lot of moisture, to rain, etc., you may have to put less if it's, a, if it's a humid country. Okay, so now we've got almost all the flour incorporated. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tip it onto my board, my work surface. And just work that until I get all the flour mixed in. We don't need to knead it like bread. I'm just pushing it together and picking up the dry bits of flour. That's all. Once we've got it to this stage, then we can divide it up into however many dumplings we want. Now, I don't know what size dumplings you're going to have. You can have whatever size you wish. I'm using that size, as you can see. I'm just cutting it into four. I'm going to roll it into balls and pop it on the plate. And then we'll see how the stew's going. So let's see how the stew's doing. It's looking very, very nice, as you can see. Now, if you want this gravy thicker, you will need to add a little corn flour uh, at this stage. Just a teaspoonful in a drop of cold water, just to thicken it to your liking. I'm going to leave it like this until I've done my dumplings, okay? Now, the dumplings are going to sit just gently on top like this. And that's going to go back until they're cooked. Probably take about, in the slow cooker, another 35 minutes. Probably a little longer. If you want them crispy on top, you have to put them in the oven. And I'm going to do that with a few just to show you. Okay. So here we are. I just did a few, a small amount of the stew in there. And I put the dumplings in and they're nice crispy tops on them. That's how I like them. If you don't like them like that, just leave them in the slow cooker and they'll puff up. They'll be nice and fluffy, but they won't be crispy on the top. Now, how you choose to eat your um, stew is entirely up to you. But 
I'm of the old school. I don't like anything fancy on the plate. I like to see my food presented nicely on the plate, but I don't like adding unnecessary things to the plate. Uh, and in this stew, if it's made properly, it has everything in it you need. You don't need to add extra potatoes. You don't need to add extra vegetables. You don't really need to add anything extra to it at all because I use new potatoes in this as I mentioned to you but I would normally um, use ordinary ones but I have found by using the new ones here they haven't broken up they haven't uh, gone to mush so there we are and we're now just going to pop on a dumpling for myself Just right for a warm uh, for a warming supper or a midweek meal, and it's cheap. You can make a little beef go a long way with your vegetables, and it is absolutely delightful. I'm sure everybody will love it. Well, that's it for today. I'm going to sit down now and enjoy my stew and dumplings. It's almost six o'clock and I normally have my evening meal between six and seven o'clock so I'm going to sit and enjoy that at my leisure. I hope you've enjoyed the video if you have go underneath give it a thumbs up if you like it. You can also go underneath and leave any suggestions comments or questions underneath in the comment section. I do read every single one and I try to reply to as many as I possibly can. Now, if you haven't subscribed to see the, it's free to subscribe, by the way. The difference is if you subscribe and press the little bell icon, which is there, YouTube will tell you every time I put up a new video so you won't miss one. OK, now it's Mr. Paul saying bye for now and I'll see you next time. Bye.